Magpie, and welcome back to a Monday. Once again, uh, with the Casio DJ1, or Rap2, Rap Studio. Yeah, I did a video on this one last week, when I talked a lot about this being the master level Casio Rap Man, but in that video, I also said that, of course, I intend to open it up and circuit bend it at some point, and probably also do a tape speed modification, because we have this Cosio Ratman that you can record internally to the tape. So I think it can be really, really cool uh, with circuit bending and speed modding it. But yeah, I left it kind of open-ended because I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it right away, but then I got really excited. So now I'm gonna do it right away. So we're just gonna open it and see ooh, if uh, it's as easy to do as I think it's gonna be. Oi, oi, oi. It's got a lot of screws and they're all very, very stuck, so. While I unscrew this, I might as well tell you that I had originally planned, actually, to do uh, marketing of sorts this week, uh, starting to <laughs> make demos and show all the new Magpie pedal stuff, but this was way too uh, attractive to not do right away, so... Someone has to promise me that they will go to magpiepedals.com. Nah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Where to start? These are the synthesizer boards or keyboard boards. So those should be somewhat equivalent to the Casio Rapman. They don't look to be though. So like a proper chef in a cooking show, I had already prepared the Casio Rapman. So I went in and I circuit bent this one yesterday. It was very straightforward and easy. So I was very hopeful that it was going to be with this one as well. But just by doing a bit of an inside comparison, we can see that this is actually gonna be a bit trickier than I thought it was gonna be. In the wrap man, all we have is this one big PCB that is like a one-sided thing. So all the traces are just on the other side, but all the components stick up. I mean, if that's the case here, this is some very, very empty. But what I, what I want to look for is the same ICs, you know, the ships on it. When I circuit bent this one, I found that there's one ship that takes care of all the voice effector stuff, and you can clock that down. I'm gonna do that with an LTC 1799. It gets really, really cool. So this one is for the voice effector, and sadly we're gonna have to go, probably it's gonna be way easier if I get rid of this PCB and I can see these two jumpers here, I'm gonna assume that that is. And that's where we're gonna cut it and put in an LTC 1799 uh, oscillator. So it's hopefully going to be very, very easy, but we need to localize, locate the other IC that takes care of all of the keyboard stuff. And I'm wondering about that one, IC 600, because we have a clock source here. Like this baby blue rectangle is, yeah clocking whatever that one does. I did say that I wanted to attach like a general pitch pot to however this works. In the original Rapman it works like this one, which just goes from side to side and it actually activates two buttons here with just a piece of plastic. But on this side, yeah, it's just like a really big pot <laughs> there, which is kind of cool, but I'm not sure how I would attach more than one, so. Maybe, but let's turn this one around and have a look at the other side. Okay, there's actually a trim pot. That might be for tuning it, but yeah, there's also a trim pot. And here's something funky. Those two are the only two that seems to need a very high speed. So it might be that you can actually clock down other things things or something with those or they are just you know anything else i don't know i breathe too much of these fumes so i don't know anything but those two clock sources are on the ratman keyboard so those are a clue i'm gonna cut the traces for those so all you do is you follow along and this one is very obviously that thing but it should have two like a clock in and a clock out so it might be that jumper but since those are very 
easily accessible, we're just gonna cut those jumpers. And then on this one, we're gonna have to look underneath these two caps here because I think there at least is one jumper there. Then all you do is we're gonna have to probe and find the powering ground and then just replace whichever jumper. We need to cut both jumpers, but we only need to solder to the clock in. So let's do that. Okay, after many hours, <laughs> for me, I am finally ready to show you stuff. So this thing, I have decided to try and <laughs> put the circuit bend with this one because it turns out that it's just attached like a D shaft or flat shaft part on there. So what I have done is I'm redirecting that one because it's got a trim pot. Like I, I checked out both of the trim pots on the other side of the board and that one is just setting the tuning of those samples. And then they're outboarding like a second potentiometer to this one. So that was the same for the other trim pot over here, actually, might as well mention that. So with this one, I can now do a way more drastic tape speed because that trim pot was just setting the motor speed for the tape recorder. So that's very practical that you can just, you know, outboard that one as well. But yeah, back to this one. So what I am now gonna try to fit in there is this which is a stereo potentiometer where it's completely the wrong value for the circuit bend of the, you know, patterns and keyboards and stuff. So I had to do this really janky trim pot situation where I'm like dividing, sort of speak, the, uh, yeah. Yeah, this one now tuning both the pitch of the samples and the patterns and stuff. And I'm gonna see if I can get it to be in here and actually be, oh yeah, I can do it like that. That's really nice. That's handy. Put it in the crack. Nice. But yeah, I realized it is this IC, that is the IC for the patterns and stuff. You realize that really quickly as soon as you cut here and I have to like, you know, set a speed on it, solder it to one of them. Okay, nothing happened. Turn it off, turn it back on again, set another speed and see if it starts working at some point. Cause you gotta be really high in speed because it's really sensitive to going too low which just cuts out completely. So that took the better part of an hour of just setting that one part up. The other bend for that one, way more straightforward. You just take this PCB, flip it over, cut the two traces that you see going from a identical light blue rectangular shape. Just try one of them and it's not gonna be as sensitive to going lower in speed. So it just works right off the bat pretty much. And that coupled with this feedback switch that I put here where I'm literally just soldering the microphone to the output jack, but with a potentiometer in between so you can like mix that feedback in. It just makes for a glorious effect. In any uh, case, it's not at all as straightforward as the original Rapman, but it is identical IC. So if you know how to do it on a Rapman, you can do it on this one. And you can of course do not trying to get the part to be on this one. <laughs> but I'm gonna show the Rapman in a separate video. Uh, so now I'm just gonna try to fit them anywhere. That's actually gonna be a bit problematic because there aren't really any nice places. <laughs> Okay, I, <laughs> I just sat down to do uh, sound checking, like to see so everything actually uh, works now that I was able to put it in place. And it looks 
good. However, what I realized right away now is that it's really cool that like the slap follows the pitch. So I want to reach that one and be able to play something and do like that. is hard to do so what I want to do now is I actually want to go inside again and add switches for all of these because that's gonna be really cool since you can hold it in and it just repeats come on yo come on yo come on yo that's gonna be super practical to just be able to do okay I want come on y'all to be going indefinitely but we're gonna go through the new controls and we're gonna make a lot of sounds now to just try you know I want to get to know you you little thing uh, do you want to get to know me mm. I take that as a yeah hello okay I realized that I was too excited I hadn't plugged in the microphone yet <laughs> so that's kind of fun but now I have Woo. where to uh, start this one is the original part from here so, and this one you can spin forever and ever and ever and it just, you know, based on the position of it, it sets sort of the spectrum of this one. So now I can go very low, maybe that's the lowest. Come on, yo. Come on, yo. But then if I were to go higher Come on, pitch... Yo. Come on, yo. Come on. But I can't go as deep, but I can go very bright, too bright. Either. But that also means that I can sort of tune it to work together with... Uh... <laughs> cool effect. <laughs> I can show feedback also, uh, because that's really, really cool. No more needing to do chicka 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 cha or take the microphone, which you can now still plug in actually. But we have a switch here that you can turn on. And then this one is the mix sort of input for the feedback. And it's very based on the mic volume. And above it, we have pitch or like speed for the ship doing that voice effector thing. So, uh, <laughs> now we, you can actually make it more or less clean, so to speak, where it starts to distort quite a lot and just self oscillate which might be cool in pattern and then just you know mix in how, how far away or how in front you want that shenanigans to be with this one well this one you can dial back how intense it is I guess Okay, keeping it really fast in a pattern is really cool. Like almost regardless. Pew, 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 pew. Thank you. 
Lastly, of course, we have also the tape speed modification. See, ah. Make it go very fast. Oh yeah, it doesn't like that. Let's actually go really fast on this one also. Let's see. What? Polyrhythmic stereo stuff. <laughs> That's really cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 